if you are interested in optimizing, of course you might find yourself in some situations in which you have to do the optimization by hand for a certain machine, for a certain computer, considering exactly architecture or some particular things of that computer. For example, how many caches it has, how long these caches are, etc, etc, etc. There is really plenty of things and for sure a computer engineer could really tell you plenty more things than me about it. But of course this program that is exactly optimized for that computer, that machine, it's something you might do if you are interested in using a certain HPC cluster for example. You know you need to use this one to do many very intensive calculations on it then you might do an ad hoc optimization but usually you want to have a program that works on any kind of computer or at least any kind of normal computer or HPC cluster but you still want this kind of optimization done for any kind of processor I might have any kind of cache I might have if I have a more complex data structure I want it to be rated in the smartest way possible etc etc and actually you can do it without having really to do too much about it what you can do is using the optimization flags of your compiler so actually the compiler will try to optimize th things instead of you doing it and of course if you compile on two different computers it will do it in the right way depending on the computer you're, op you're compiling it on now for example your two very famous compilers could be the GNU compiler, open source and free, or the, the Intel compiler that's uh, not open source and not free at all, but of course if you're using some Intel processors, for example on an HPC cluster, you might be very interested in using their compiler because of course it will be faster than the GNU one on Intel processors. In both the compilers, the flag to have optimizations is minus uppercase O and that's the flag you will use and then you will have different levels of optimization 3, 4, etc. There, are, there is no R2 uh, binding between a GNU 1 or 1 could be different from Intel O1 etc. You will have to look up the documentation because uh, there could be any kind of differences. But important things to know is minus O0 means absolutely no optimization is done. And that's very important when you have to do debugging because uh, if you let the compiler change your code by doing some kind of the optimization, you won't be able to do debugging anymore because you will get um, debugging. If you use a debugger, you will get information that has no sense with the source code you wrote because the source code will have been changed by the compiler. For GNU, minus O0 is the default, while for Intel, uh, the default is some kind of optimization. I don't remember if it was O2 or O3, maybe. So, always pay attention. If I uh, have to do some debugging with Intel, you have to be explicit, while with GNU, you're not. Then you will have different levels of optimization that will be more and more aggressive, and you might say, okay, I will always use the more aggressive one that uh, the compiler gives me. And no, that's not the right path, because uh, at a certain point, the compiler will simply start giving you a wrong program, because this the semantics of the program won't be expected anymore. Or you might even have a worse result than at using a lesser optimization, because maybe it's trying to do some th strange things that may make sense in some situations but make no sense in your program so you will always have to try for two things first that your program still does what it has to do therefore you need to have tests for your program not only end-to-end -end tests but also tests for the single function so unit tests, black box blocks, testing, uh, integration testing that's very important otherwise you don't know if your program is still valid with a certain optimization. Usually compilers will tell you, okay, till O big 2, you will have, we more or less guarantee you there will be no semantics problems. But first, you might have some strange situation in which actually the compiler fails 
two, you might need to go faster. So you might need to see how much you can go without having problems. And maybe you can even go more complex. So you maybe see that with four you have problems, but you go, I don't know, 10% faster than with three. And you might start going and using all your O3, but then going to search exactly for what was the flag behind O4 because O4 is a short for seeing a lot of flags because it will do or not do a lot of things. You will have to search exactly for that one. Don't use it and by hand add all the other flags that are inside O4 but not inside O3. And how can you know which one is the one that gives a problem? By compiling it and running the tests and seeing if the tests pass, okay, the compiler didn't mess up stuff. If they fail, the compiler messed up something. So that flag shouldn't be used. So yeah, even though very often programmers in general try to avoid doing testing because yes, it can be boring and time consuming, uh, actually you have to do it because you really never, never, never know if what you're doing makes sense or if your program is simply giving you garbage because you know, can't know if you don't test it. And so as said, if you use minus o, big O and the various numbers, you will have the compiler doing optimization for you. Of course, there is also flags to know uh, which kind of uh, which kind of optimization he did in your code actually, and to see the optimized code. So if you're really interested in knowing what happens when the compiler optimizes. Uh, there are f you have to look in the documentation of your specific um, compiler, so you might even have an EBM or any other compiler, and you will have to consider and look uh, what the flag is, and so you can see what actually the compiler does to your code. And it might be very interesting. <coughs> and actually, any time in which it's possible, that's the best thing to do. You have to write a code that is as easy as possible to optimize for your compiler without having to without doing too fancy stuff in this way as said the compiler will be able able to optimize it exactly as it has to be optimized for each different computer it will probably be do less errors than you and your problem uh, program will be more readable of course there are some situations in which the compiler can't do it and you have to do it by hand and in this case of course you will have a less portable and a less readable program but uh, yeah of course if you have no choice there is nothing to do but as long as you can of course using the optimizations that are built inside the compiler is the best option i hope you enjoyed the video all the sources and the materials i used to do it are written in the description below and here is some more content for you. But wait, don't click on it yet. First remember to leave a feedback in the comments section to let me know what you think about it. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, links in the description. And if you would like to support the channel, consider to donate on Patreon. Again, link in the description below. See you next time. I'm Maurice Karnbrook for The Computational Chemist.